Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Jochem. Okay gang, so in the previous video, we saw how when using a halo arene, right? Halo arene meaning a halogen directly attached to an aryl carbon, which is inside of a benzene ring or inside an aromatic system, we could use some conditions, right? Not ideally with high temperature and pressure to actually do some substitution and create a phenol, right? So this works, but we need to really crank up the temperature and the pressure for our reaction conditions to make it happen. So not ideal. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a new process and a process that's, process that's going to help us make phenols much more effectively without needing to crank up the pressure and temperature. And it's, and we're gonna learn some big words, but through the process of diazotization, which is this process right here where you have um, this is more generically called aniline, the common name for this. But if you have some type of, you know, aniline or anil if you have aniline or an aniline derivative, basically if you have an aryl amine, you can use these conditions right here to create what is called an arena diazonium ion. And that very easily you can convert that arena diazonium ion to phenol. This part is super simple and this part isn't bad either but I wanna walk you through mechanistically how this occurs, and then very easily you'll see how this happens. So, two big words, one awesome mechanism, let's get after it. Okay gang, so let's dive headfirst into the diazotization mechanism. Okay, so to be very clear, diazot diazotization, it's very hard to say, is just the process where you take your uh, your aryl amine, right, whether it be aniline or some aniline derivative, and you're just going to tack on this N2, uh, you know, substituent with a plus charge on that nitrogen, right? So this is the process, and the, through diazotization, we create arena diazonium ions, right? So that is this ion right there, okay? So to do this, we're going to have some acid. It doesn't have to be HCl, but HCl is very commonly used and we're going to use sodium nitrite. That is the uh, kind of star of how we're going to get this to go. So we almost have like a little electrophilic preparation that we need to do similar with our EAS reactions. So you're going to just take your, this is uh, our nitrite ion right here. Basically, we're just gonna protonate this oxygen up enough to where it'll leave as water and give us a very positive nitrogen to stick on our benzene ring. So this, this is how this is gonna go. Or not exactly on the benzene ring, but you'll see what I mean. So we'll go ahead, this negative oxygen in our nitrite will just be in love with the very positive protons from HCl, strong acid. So first step, protonate there. And sure enough, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just do it again. So now that we have this going on, water is obviously a good leaving group. No problem at all for it to just peace out and go. And what we actually create is this ion right here. And it exhibits resonance, so that was totally okay. That water left. So we definitely have, you know, an electrophile here ready to go. Now what's going to happen is our benzene ring is just sitting oh so patiently here. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to start over here. I don't know if I did the best for my room laying things out, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to use this form of the electrophile. So what's going to happen is the nitrogen is going to be this negative nitrogen is going to be very interested in the positively charged nitrogen, so we're going to just attack. We don't have to move any bonds here because right here, nitrogen only has three bonds, so it can definitely accept electrons right here. Okay, so what we got at this point, I'm gonna draw my benzene ring a little bit lower because I'm gonna need space up top, is we have a nitrogen, two hydrogens, a nitrogen over here, the double bonded oxygen right here. 
So actually it's this nitrogen now that bears a positive charge. That nitrogen is now neutral. This is our situation. But we need to get to looking like this. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we just need to play our very famous game of protonate who we want to leave, deprotonate who we want to stay. So very easily we want to see that we need to deprotonate this right here. Feel free to use, I don't know, uh, you probably have water. We're in an aqueous environment. You have water floating around, so let's use water. And I'm going to use, I'll just use H3O+. Plus. Realistically, this could be your HCl. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so go all the way over here. So what we got is a nitrogen right here. So we have this now. So what's going to happen here is this bond is going to swing down because we need to get closer to this triple bond, right? So a bond's going to, double bond's going to form there. We'll break the octet rule with this nitrogen if we do nothing. So what needs to happen is that this can bump over to oxygen. So now this nitrogen again bears a positive charge. We have a double bond here. We have a single bond to this oxygen right here that is looking like this. So again, let's play the game one more time. Let's protonate this oxygen up to being water. Let's deprotonate this because we want it to stay. So let's have water come along, help us out here, get rid of that positive charge on nitrogen. Let's bring a hydronium around. I'll abbreviate it a bit to protonate that up to what we need it to be. Run that space, hopefully this all fits. And H, oh, nope, just kidding. Double bond, single bond, OH2 plus. Okay, so here's the big break. Here's where we finally get to where we need to be. Once more, I'm going to swing these electrons in, forming the triple bond we know we want, and now we're gonna kick off water. So in this step, we get a minus H2O, and we finally get our arenazonium, arenadiazonium ion. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna draw this straight up and down, positive charge on this nitrogen, and I hope you are all saying that needs to be in this fashion, like I can't draw this like this, right? This is a big no-no because we have triple bonds here. This is linear geometry. It needs to be, this 180 degree angle needs to be reflected, okay? All right, so really, the only thing, thing new I feel like is maybe the production of our electrophile at the top, right? So you're, you're, you're learning to work with nitrite. You're just basically protonating oxygen to the point where it leaves, puts a positive charge on the nitrogen in nitrite, or in the nitrogen that came from nitrite, and then bring in your aniline or your aniline derivative, and it's basically just going to latch on, and then it's just a proton shuffle, getting the oxygen ready to leave, getting this nitrogen and this nitrogen ready to be triple bonded, and again, yes, don't forget, there's a positive charge there because this is an arena diazonium ion. So this is the mechanism. You may never need to show anyone this, but just in case you do, you are locked and ready to go. And what we will now see, the easier part in my opinion, is how we can use these things to actually make phenols or do attack uh, from them. So let me just clean this up and I'll show you how it goes. Okay gang, so let's take a look as to how we can use these arena diazonium ions to get to our ultimate goal of making phenols. Okay, so if you look at the board, we know how we got here. Right, we know how the diazotization process works. We just looked at the mechanism. So when you do have your arena diazonium ion, all you need to do is just turn up the heat, crank up the oven in your reaction, put in some heat. What that will do is that will make this N2 leave. Because remember, nitrogen gas N2, it's a super stable compound. It loves to exist on its own, and we know nature likes stability. So when given the necessary heat, nitrogen gas leaves and what that leaves you with is an aryl cation. Now this is super, super, super duper crazy reactive. 
So all you need to do, no good nucleophile needed. Throw subpar water in there, right? Water's not a good nucleophile. But in this situation, your substrate is crazy reactive, so water is good enough to do the job, and you know how this attack would go. You would just have water get in there, attack, then you'd have a cleanup step. So really, diazotization, I feel like, is the bulk of how to make phenols from your aniline or your aniline derivatives, right? So we just know if you were to have aniline, you throw in some sodium nitrite and some acid like HCl. We know how diazotization works. We just crank up some heat. We throw in whatever we want to tack on. In this case, it's going to be water, and that's how you make a phenol. All right, gang, so I want to just clean this up. I have a pretty cool example I want to show you and we'll call it quits. Okay gang, let's rip this example and call it a video. All right, so the way this problem would be posed is, uh, you know, the problem would say, given this reaction right here, when this substance is heated up and put in the presence of this other organic compound, we see the formation of this product, and the problem also states that, you know, two not important products, but two products that are formed, two products that are formed, are two gases, and they do not name what those gases are. Okay, so if we think about what we've been learning, okay, clearly we see we have a arena diazonium ion and we're heating it. So without you know getting too overwhelmed by what the heck this thing is over here, I think we can all agree on this is going to leave as nitrogen gas. Okay, so that's maybe the first thing that kind of jumps out, at least to me. Now, the other thing I'm thinking of is I see heat and I also see that from this product to this product, we form a six-membered ring, and I see a weirdly uh, nostalgic, weirdly, you know, characteristic bond right there. And I also see that I could redraw this like this. So I hope you're picking up on the fact that this is a diene, okay? So, and we form a six-membered ring, so I, maybe it jumped out to you that this is deals order geared, but that's, it's not... It's, you know, we need to propose a mechanism for this. So I think that it's easy to say that this is under the umbrella of diels alder reactions, okay? So, but let's, let's take it baby steps. Let's take our product, and we know when we heat this, this is going to leave. So if I draw this down here, I know I have an aryl cation, and I'll have this. Now, think about this. That explains one of the gases. But what about the other gas? Well, what do we have right here? I see a carbon and two oxygens, and we're heating, so maybe we do a decarboxylation here, and that will explain the other gas. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is we will swing down. This forms CO2, but I'll break the octet rule here, so those electrons go on to benzene. So I hope you're thinking this is a weird structure I've never seen before. And yes, this is a valid resonance structure, but maybe I'll draw it like this, and this will look a little bit more familiar to us. This will form a benzene intermediate, okay? So we do have two valid resonance structures here. However, if we take a look at our situation, right? We need to explain a mechanism for how this works. And I think it's really easy to see that we can have this sort of thing going on. Okay? So I'm going to erase this. And I believe our deals order reaction goes just like this. So I'm going to make a bond here. That'll break the octet rule. So one of these bonds is going to come with this carbon and go right here. And we have an arrow go here. That explains this double bond right there. So that's why I now have one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's the brand new ring right here. And on carbons one and four, one and four, right? Because one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have two methyl groups and they're both facing the same way. They're both out groups. So I can just go ahead and make them either wedges or dashes. In fact, with this problem, you know, this is only 50% of what we're going to get because we will get 50% of 
this as well. So really cool, we're seeing some like really original OCHEM2 chemistry kind of combined with the stuff we're doing right now. Okay gang, so I hope the hardest part of this video might be learning how to pronounce diazotization and arena diazonium ions. I know it honestly, I was practicing before I started rolling. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next video.